So, I want to build an engine from scratch. At this point, this channel should pretty much just be called doing things the least efficient way or reinventing the wheel or something like that, because that's basically what happens a lot of the time. Um, fair warning before we get into it, this is a lot of technical planning, a lot of uh, early concept design, and some things that I scrap, some things that probably aren't even going to get used. So, it's not going to be the most exciting thing around at this moment in time. Um, but from here on out, uh, I'm hoping to get more in-depth into the build process. This first bit is literally a trial, like I'm starting from the bottom and I'm seeing what happens. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So this is a crankcase that I built uh, just out of 3D printing just to uh, see if I could build a rotating assembly. And it sort of works a little bit. So what I'm trying to do is replace the Porsche motor that's in that car currently. Um, it's not that good, and I knew it knew that when I put it in there. Um, I wanted to build that around the M96 chassis, uh, or engine code, rather. And, I mean, it, it works well for what it is, and I went through a few steps in trying to replace that motor with a few different things or getting it rebuilt, but anybody who knows how much it costs to rebuild an M96 doesn't want to build, rebuild an M96. I'm going to start out small. Obviously, this is just a little steam-powered thing that I designed, not steam-compressed air. But this isn't, this is like step one. I mean, can I build a rotating assembly? Can I build valve work? Can I build stuff like that? So once I figure that out, I'm going to move on and I'm going to build the crankcase and the rotating assembly and everything that I know I can build and then uh, work on heads and valves. And we're gonna go over how we're gonna build the heads and the cylinders here in a little bit, and I have a few ideas uh, getting this started. So, yeah. So to start out with, it's just, can we build a little rotating assembly off of uh, 3D printed parts? All of it's designed by me outside of this gigantic bag of McMaster car parts. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm not expecting it to run or anything like that. I just really want the concept down and we'll go from there. So I wanted to take a quick look at this finished design for the small one, uh, for the small model. And there's actually 416 components in here, which is a lot. Um, there's a few things of notice. First of all, you can see that all of these fire at the exact same time, and that's not what actually happens. That was for simplicity of building. I didn't want to position the assembly and do a different one for each one. Um, but rest assured that I actually have a locking mechanism that is probably the worst thing ever designed in the world. Um, I was quite limited by space constraints and stuff like that. I have actually a pin locking system uh, that presses into these aluminum bushings uh, along here. Uh, that sits in behind on this flywheel bolt and um, yeah it's pretty bad but for a bolt together crankshaft the nice thing is is that these are all bearings with shims so I can crank these down very tight these are just half inch uh, uh, bearings and then I have aluminum threaded spacers in there as the crank pins of course on something this small and this underpowered that's not going to be the first line of defense it's probably going to be my plastic connecting rods um but it's entirely modular so each one of these six banks is almost identical actually identical in every single way outside of the um the head and intake system which we'll cover in a minute uh at this point we have pretty much everything exactly the way we want it um and even like these end supports and everything are are set up and printed there is a few aluminum pieces most notably these two end supports and these end caps because those are under high pressure but it's all bolt together if we take a look at the um the cap itself it has a tapered nozzle with a ball sitting in it it's a fairly common method for doing compressed air and stuff like that um it's not it's it's been done before this is absolutely nothing new and i think i have a short animation of how this all comes comes apart and of course we got a cutaway view of how that was all printed and put together so of course what we're looking at here is both uh pistons that you're seeing being built and like the connecting rods and um everything like that it was 
never really designed to be run at full speed or uh, anything because realistically a quarter inch um, air hose can only really handle 13.55 uh, CFM and because of that uh, because this engine in this configuration um, with all 12 cylinders engaged uh, moves 36 um, 36 cubic inches per revolution that means the entire engine running at full tilt and considering a perfect world at 13.55 CFM would only really be able to handle about 641.8 RPM and we can go through and figure out this and even this number isn't exactly accurate you're probably looking at plus or minus about 10 percent on that well let's be real minus 10 percent on that judging from about a 50 foot air hose essentially the friction on the air hose really causes problems with that so essentially what we're building in this video and in this little thing here is a proof of concept that i can build a rotating assembly with a piston and a crankshaft and everything goes along with that um the main body which i don't think you'll see and actually this one's fresh off the printer so it still has supports and stuff in was this um i'm really trying to focus on an entirely and obviously this needs cleanup and everything like that but an entirely modular system so that this is designed to be stacked one on top of another on top of another to add as much room as humanly possible what i'd really like to do is use some of these honda cylinder kits because they can found be found on ebay very cheap and very plentiful and from there i'd like to basically design the engine around those uh and as time goes on and as i develop a decent uh system for the top end and get the equipment to be able to manufacture the top end then i can go through and replace some of those parts and increase the efficiency of the engine do four valve heads or do something like that um these are cheap enough uh but i'm open to suggestions if anybody else has a good source on something similar or has any ideas for what uh, for other options that i could do on that the nice thing about these is they're 250 cc's per cylinder uh, single overhead cam um, so I can just run a timing chain on them and I don't have to I mean I'm gonna have to modify the cases a little bit but it's all very fairly individualized and I can add multiple of them because I'd like to do multiple cylinders uh, I have a few different layouts that will fit in the spaces provided like I said I have about 41 by 45 inches of space in the Porsche cart um at this moment i'm not ruling out anything genuinely one of the things i'm thinking of right now is a w12 or a w16 similar to what was found in the bugatti veyron um so yeah i'm experimenting around with different designs and i'm and i'm hoping to and i'm hoping to have some of those up on my social media uh soon so um i can get you guys' opinion on that so after a little bit of trial and tribulation with uh, this little pin here, um, it actually turned out pretty well. Uh, you can see just like in the drawing, it works just like it's supposed to. Um, obviously it's not final assembly. I don't have my washers in. I don't even have these all the way inserted. They're just uh, there to start out with, but it works pretty well. Um, I can design a rotating assembly. So I think my next step um, is I'm going to build uh obviously the six more of these that i need to do the steam v12 um and that's already designed that's already built uh, i'm going to toss it on the printer there's 400 hours <laughs> of uh printer time on this so i'm going to get that printing um from there uh we're going to start work uh, and expect a video out on the design process of that uh of the actual engine um, using whatever parts I decide to use, uh, starting next week. Um, and again, if anybody has any recommendations on parts that you guys think would work for me, uh, that'd be great. I'd love to hear them. Out. 
Also, I know there hasn't been a Corvette video in a minute. I am working on that, I promise. Uh, it just, it's been a little bit and not a whole lot of, not nothing video worthy has gotten done, I guess. Um, at this moment, um, this is kind of the starting box. This is the building blocks. I want to take basically the little bit that I learned on this and apply it to an actual engine and make it actually work and stuff like that. Uh, and we'll go through a few of the things that I know that I want on it. I know I want dry sump. I know I want, um, I want some decent power and I want some decent displacement, basically whatever I can fit in that, in that corner. Uh, and we'll start building that piece by piece. So thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think, uh, what direction I should take, anything I should look out for. Uh, and if you got any recommendations on some stuff, uh, this is going to be a little bit interesting of a project and, um, we'll go from there.